What's going on everyone? Uh, I'm just back with a quick sort of interesting and fun video uh, where I will be uh, quickly interacting with this chat GPT um, AI chatbot. And I've been seeing a lot of buzz on uh, the internet about how this might uh, help or potentially replace um, some of the uh, sort of like Googling and research that you uh, might do when you're looking things up and you want topics explained to you or some uh, niche thing that you have a very specific question about. Uh, this chatbot uh, seems like a, a potential uh, stepping stone to getting to a place where uh, AI might help you with that journey. So for a little bit of fun, what I thought was uh, I'm going to uh, ask it some questions about physics, specifically statistical mechanics, and I'm going to make the questions uh, get more and more complicated and see how far uh, we can go and see what this, uh, what this thing can do as of today. We'll start off very simple. What is temperature? Okay, so temperature is a measure of the heat energy of a system. It is a physical property of matter that determines whether a substance will be in a solid, liquid, or gaseous state, sure. The temperature of a system is directly related to the average kinetic energy of the particles uh, that make up the system. In general, when the temperature of a system increases, the kinetic energy of the particles also increases. Okay, so explanation might miss a little bit of subtlety, but that's usually sort of a first look at temperature that you might tell someone. Uh, so this is absolutely uh, fine, okay. So let's see if we can get it to use equations. Could I ask for uh, specific equations? Using equations, what is entropy then? Okay, so we get the Boltzmann entropy right away. Okay, so, so um, in thermodynamics, entropy is a measure of the disorder or randomness of the system. So if you watch the channel, I'm not a huge fan uh, of that explanation, but it is a valid and uh, very prominent explanation of what entropy is. So the entropy of the system can be calculated using the following equation. So this is the Boltzmann equation. So K here, wow, actually this is really nice formatting too. So K is the Boltzmann constant, uh, of course. Uh, S is the entropy of the system. Uh, w is the number of microstates, possible arrangements of particles in a system that have the same energy. Okay, so that ticks a lot of boxes, right? So W is the number of energetically accessible uh, microstates. So in this equation, the entropy of the system is directly related to the number of microstates that have the same energy. This is a perfect explanation, uh, to, to be honest, that checks a lot of boxes. So, so one subtlety uh, that might be missed, might be we might be able to clarify it, um, and that is this is not the most general form of entropy we might work with uh, when we do statistical mechanics. Uh, so let's ask it, um, to, to clarify, or maybe we'll give it specifically using equations, compare the Gibbs entropy to the Boltzmann entropy. So specifically here, uh, the Gibbs entropy is just a more general form of the Boltzmann entropy. You can recover the Boltzmann entropy from the Gibbs entropy. And so that's what I'm looking for. And if this sort of topic sounds interesting to you and how all of these things work, uh, go look at, uh, you know, I have, I, have many, I have many videos on entropy on the channel. If you do, if you do get a chance, I would definitely recommend um, checking this resource out. I, I think it's really cool and really interesting. An error occurred. If this issue persists, please contact us. Okay, so I'm going to reset the thread and I'm going to ask the same question. Using, using equations, compare the Gibbs entropy to the Boltzmann entropy. The Gibbs, okay, so it went immediately. Okay, okay, so this is this is really interesting. So, so the Gibbs entropy and the Boltzmann entropy are two different measures of entropy. Sure, the Gibbs entropy also is also known as the thermodynamic entropy. It's a measure of the randomness. Is it not the other way around? Um, the Boltzmann entropy, on the other hand, is a measure of the number of microstates that a system can have. So. Maybe they say it lower. The Gibbs entropy is a measure of this randomness or disorder, which is what they said previously about the Boltzmann entropy. And the Boltzmann entropy is a measure of the number of microstates the system can have. Okay, so that's a confusing answer based off of their uh, previous one. The equations are right, of course. Um, so 
So I would have liked to see them clarify that the Gibbs entropy is equivalent to the Boltzmann entropy if we just take the probabilities to be all equal or equal probable uh, for energetically accessible microstates. Um, so definitely very cool. Um, and I think what we can do actually is we can ask it to use uh, LaTeX instead to get a little bit of better uh, equations. I'm gonna reset it again just because it's being a little slow. Can you use LaTeX? So yes, okay, so may maybe I shouldn't have put four equations. Okay, so yes, it can use LaTeX, interesting. And I'm pretty sure now it will actually just use LaTeX when we ask it questions. So we've gotten good explanations or decent explanations for entropy and temperature, uh, maybe missing a little bit of nuances, maybe being slightly incorrect. Um, so let's ask it something a little bit more broad. So what is, or let's say with equations, what is statistical mechanics? This is the most popular uh, video on my channel. So let's see if it does a better job than me. Um, okay, so here we go. Okay, so it says statistical mechanics is a branch of physics that uses probability theory and statistical met methods to explain the behavior of a large number of particles in a system. Absolutely. So this is a much more detailed and sort of straight to the point uh, explanation uh, than the one on my channel, which is a little bit more sort of uh, motivating. But um, so statistical mechanics can be used to derive a wide range of equations that describe the behavior of systems at the macroscopic level, such as the equation of state of a gas, the distribution of velocities of particles in gas, and the laws of thermodynamics. These, these equations uh, can be used to make predictions about the behavior of a wide range of systems. So it didn't use equations. Um, maybe I said with equations, should I say using equations? Perhaps it's the input that was the issue. Okay, so, oh, as I mentioned earlier, interesting. So, so, oh, even, okay, we get the ideal gas law. Wow, okay, so this is a really long and detailed explanation. I don't wanna go through everything, but the, okay, so one of the key equations used in statistical mechanics is the Boltzmann distribution, also known as the canonical ensemble, uh, which describes the probability that a particle in a system will have a certain energy. This equation is written as follows. Okay, so interesting, so we got the temperature there. And then we also get uh, the equation of the state of a gas. So the ideal gas law, which is a result. You can see me derive that on the equation. Uh, you can see me derive that equation on the channel um, as well, if that's interesting. Okay, so I, li I like this I like this explanation. These are sort of like uh, sort, of, sort of mainstream uh, questions. I don't know how niche we can go. Maybe we'll try that. So let's, let's try to go a little bit more niche. Let's, um, let's ask it more of a modern question. So using equations, explain statistical mechanics using the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. So this is uh, a pretty abstract question. Basically what I'm hoping for is that it will explain how um, the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis is related to statistical mechanics. And for and sort of seeing if uh, ETH will come up, like to, does the AI even know about it? Uh, know about it? But I mean, so I mean, so far so good, right? Like if you wanted to know what is statistical mechanics, I mean, that was a very good, uh, a very good explanation. Very impressive piece of software so far, or or is it? I, I guess I don't know much about uh, AI. So um, if you do know more than me, or you have more experience than me, uh, definitely let me know in the comments if. I should be impressed by what I'm seeing right now. Uh, okay, it does know what ETH is. We got an equation, we got a bolt, we got... Interesting, interesting, okay. Maybe we can find a good follow-up question based off of this. The Einstein thermalization hypothesis is a principle in statistical mechanics that proposes that the behavior of many of a many-body quantum system can be described by its microcanonical ensemble which is a probability distribution of all possible energy I can say of the system. This means that by under certain that under certain conditions the behavior of a quantum system can be predicted by considering the energy eigenstates of the system and their corresponding probabilities. So this is kind of a confusing sentence. The ETH proposes that the behavior 
of a quantum system in thermal equilibrium can be predicted by considering the thermal density matrix and the energy eigenstates that make up the matrix. I mean, sort of misses the point. This means that for a given system in thermal equilibrium, the behavior of the system can be predicted by considering the probabilities of the energy eigenstates and the energies of those states. So, so th this is this is misleading, unfortunately. So it does know what ETH is, but it seems to have been mistaken uh, in in some regards, and that is that uh, it's mistaken in in such a way that. Actually, ETH is telling us that only, for example, one energy eigenstate should reproduce uh, some of the thermal properties or a lot of the thermal properties, uh, specifically for subsystems uh, of your total system. So it's a little bit off, um, uh, but it's close. I mean, ETH isn't uh, super new, but I mean, it, it really exists mostly um, in one textbook that I'm aware of, um, and then mostly research articles, right? So it does have a Wikipedia page as well, but uh, I imagine there's not a lot of resources uh, to teach an AI what the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis is. So I wonder, I wonder how far we can take um, the equations. Maybe it might be possible for the AI to, to help you compute something or remind you how to compute something if you've forgotten. So let's ask, how to compute the entanglement entropy. I guess that's not a grammatically correct. How do you compute the entanglement entropy? This would be very interesting if it actually sort of reminds me how to compute it. Because I guess this would be um, maybe one of the simpler things that I would use something like this for is like when I forget an equation or I forget how to use an equation or the definition of something, it'd be useful uh, to have a, a very easy place to go. And, you know, sometimes you sort of have to dig, dig around on Google, um, but it'd be interesting to know if uh, this could be a potential tool for something like that. So how do you compute the entanglement entropy? Okay, so I did reset it, but okay, so the entanglement entropy is a measure of the entanglement of a subsystem of a larger system. It's typically calculated by tracing over the degrees of freedom. Okay, so using equations, how do you, how, how do you compute the entanglement entropy? So it sort of explains it in words, but I, I'm curious if it would write down the equations for us and how in-depth uh, the equations. I, I imagine that every single time you ask it, the, que the answer might be a little bit different, but you know, it would be interesting if this could become a tool that could help you with like these little, these little things that can, be, that can be a little tedious to sort of track down the right equation sometimes. I also imagine there's a lot of people using this service right now, and it's a very new service. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, more complicated questions not only take longer, but might not get the computing resources um, that they would need until services are expanded. Okay, okay, so we got equations now. Okay, so so what it's given us is just the von Neumann entropy, and then it's just called rho the uh, density matrix of the subsystem, and it looks like it stopped using uh, LaTeX. Uh, but uh, okay, so how do you compute the partial trace? It, basically, that's the that's the biggest thing about the um, uh, computation or the sort of the, the mathematical problem. Uh, that you'd be interested in probably looking up. To compute the partial trace of a density matrix rho, we can express it as a tensor product of two matrices A and B, such that rho is equal to A tensor B. Okay, so you can't always do that. So this isn't uh, correct. It would be correct if you could express it that way, but you know, if you have entanglement, you can't. I wonder if I wonder if you can say that. What if your state is entangled? Okay, it's almost like having a conversation with someone. Um, if a quantum state is entangled, it means that the state cannot be expressed as a direct product of states of individual subsystems. In other words, wait, is this a generic response or is it responding to me? Entangled states have the unique properties that distinguish them from. Okay, so, so I'm not quite sure if this is uh, as conversational as I originally thought. The first sentence made it seem that way. Uh, but perhaps that was naive of me. Okay, so there's definitely some good and some bad here. Um, one thing that I'm curious about is like, I think all of this stuff can be improved over time, of course. 
Um, so eventually these explanations will become uh, more detailed and it looks like there is sort of room here to have you know late latex up uh, explanations of mathematics that you might be interested in um, but no matter what happens uh, this AI might miss some nuance or some subtlety uh, so it would be nice if it could be able to cite its sources so let's try to make it explain something um, but also point us in the direction of further reading so let's ask about the ergodic hypothesis So I haven't made a video about the ergodic hypothesis yet. I probably should, uh, but let's see if it can cite its sources. It would be very cool if it could cite its sources. And if, and if it can't, uh, that's something that uh, would be a very useful and probably a crucial feature uh, to have if this was gonna be used uh, for sort of, you know, helping the day-to-day -day stuff that a scientist might uh, might need. But perhaps that's too much to ask for. I, I don't know. So I wasn't quite able to get it to cite its sources. Uh, so that's definitely a desirable feature uh, to be added in. And I guess my overall conclusion um, of this tool is that uh, it's certainly not ready to replace, uh, uh, to replace uh, YouTube channels uh, like mine. Uh, or teaching or anything like this, and it's probably not ready to be a useful tool for day-to-day -day activities uh, for scientists, at least for looking up uh, useful things um, like equations and, and things like that. It, but it looks like, it looks promising, like it looks like that's definitely something that we could see in the future. In the future, you might be doing research um, and you might be able to type into a chat to a bot or maybe even out loud, um, and have the equation uh, that you're interested um, in remembering uh, pop up on your screen with a quick explanation uh, of it. And I'm definitely going to keep my eye on it. So um, if you guys want to, uh, definitely go and create an account, it's free. Uh, let me know what you ask uh, the bot and see what type of uh, answers you can get out of it. Um, and let me know either in the Discord channel or in the comments. But that's it for uh, today's video. Uh, if you liked the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.